Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Katie Gerardo made stereotypical roles look exotic. She added spice to her roles which distinguished her from other actresses and helped her become successful. However, her success didn't come without a price. How Katie Gerardo gave an orgasmic feeling to her audience. I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button. The original Spitfire. How Katie Gerardo took the world by storm. The new generation of movie watchers would look at the current Latina stars and believe they are the best to ever do it. These new Latina stars have a sexy yet fiery nature to them that sends the new generation of movie audiences an orgasmic feeling. But for us, the old guard, it's nothing we haven't seen before. We have seen fiery Latinas before it became a thing. Heck, we even know who set the template for this. Katie Gerardo, the original Latina Spitfire. Her beautiful looks were the opposite of her nature, but Gerardo didn't think she was beautiful. Commenting on herself, she said, I knew that my body was provocative, but also that I was not beautiful, although my physique was different and very sensual. She had large eyes, which many men have lost themselves in, and a voluptuous body lots of actors would have loved to wake up to. But her temper? Dios mio! She could raise a whole building down with her temper, and she wasn't afraid of tongue-lashing anyone that needed it. Senorita Gerardo didn't think about what she wanted to say. She just said it. Consequences be damned! The director of one of her earliest Hollywood films, High Noon, got the surprise of his life when he crossed Katie. The director thought Katie's ability to portray a short-tempered woman in the film was just pure acting skills. He didn't know Katie had a lot of experience doing that in real life. Being a new entrant to Hollywood, Gerardo didn't have clout yet, so the director gave Grace Kelly more close-ups than he did Gerardo. Katie went on a tirade and told the director off. She described him as being half in love with Grace Kelly. The sexy Latina actress had a lot of Mexican movies in her belt and had even won the Ariel, the Mexican equivalent of the Oscars. She wouldn't be treated like second class. Well, while that director learned his lesson, another one disrespected Katie. The actress was just getting introduced to Hollywood and didn't have a mastery over the English language yet. So for her audition her English was basic, and rather than empathise with Gerardo's position, the director burst into mocking laughter. It was a bad idea. No one mocked the actress. No one. The sensational senorita burst into a legendary rant. She took the director to the cleaners, insulting the man in Spanish as she burst out of the studio. She had spunk, and Hollywood loved those who had spunk in them. It was this spunk that helped the actress achieve success. She was never a slouch and worked twice as hard as anyone. While she was an actress in Mexico, she tapped into other aspects of her artistic side. She was also a writer, and she wrote movie reviews in newspapers. Also, as a lover of bullfighting, Katie reviewed bullfights. Katie also had a radio job where she worked as a reporter. The superb actress worked till she was old, and with all her working experience and determination, it isn't surprising that the actress was able to attain wealth and fame, even in the face of tragedies Katie kept on working. Maria Cristina Estela Marcella Gerardo Garcia, or Katie Gerardo, was born in 1924 in Guadalajara, Mexico. She was born to a formerly rich family who used to own a larger part of where is now known as Texas before the Mexican Revolution took everything from them. However, her father, who was a cattle farmer with large orange groves, and her mother, a former opera singer who retired to raise a family, still liked to think they were rich. On her family's attitude, Gerardo had this to say, My family is no longer very, very rich, but they still live that way. It's normal for the actress to be a critic of her family's has-been wealth. Their attachment to their past wealth almost cost her her career. They didn't want her to become an actress and made moves to block her career from blossoming. Right from a child, Katie loved acting and with her elegance an opportunity fell right into her lap. Emilio Fernandez, an iconic Mexican actor, saw Katie and wanted her to be part of the film he was shooting. 
Isle of Passion. The actress's parents were livid, and their pride was hurt. To them it was a distasteful career, not befitting for someone of their prestige. They said no, and they thought that was the last of it. They wanted their daughter to face her studies and pursue becoming a bilingual secretary. They didn't know that their daughter had every bit of the pride they had. She plotted her vengeance. Her mistake was letting her parents know that she was approached. She knew another opportunity would come, and this time she would be subtle. Opportunities came as she was to act in the film No Mataras and Internado para Senoritas. She won an aerial award for her performance in No Mataras. This time Gerardo didn't tell her parents what she was up to and signed the movie contract behind their backs. It wouldn't be the only thing she did behind their backs. She ran off with another teenage rising star, Victor Velaquez, as the two who believed they were in love rushed to marry each other a year after meeting each other. Her eagerness to marry is ironic, considering she went to a nun school in the Guadalupe Inn, Mexico City. The two weren't ready for the commitments of marriage. The two were passionate about acting and being successful, which ended up being bad for their marriage. After two children, a boy and a girl, the two divorced within four years of their marriage. Reports claim that the divorce was extremely messy. It was after her divorce that No Mataras got released. On the one hand, she had become a star. On the other hand, she was a mother of two children and unmarried. She had to handle her high and her low together at the same time. However, she didn't have to lie low for so long as she continued to get roles that kept her busy and also away from her children, something she would later regret. As we mentioned before, Katie wrote reviews for bullfights, and it was during a bullfighting match that she intended to review that actor, John Wayne, and director Bud Botecker saw her. The two of them were drawn to her. Report said Bud was more than just drawn to her as the two had an affair. Bud wouldn't be the only one she would have an affair with, but let's save that for later. Bud and John convinced the actress to take a part in their film, The Bullfighter and the Lady, where she acted the part of a matador's wife. Interestingly, the actress couldn't speak English, but Bud didn't care, and insisted she must play the part. Although Botecker didn't know she had acting experience, the actress deployed her line memorization skills to memorize her English lines, as a crew member read them to her. She masterfully memorized her lines down to the tone. The star managed to turn her limitation into a strength so much that Stanley Kramer wanted her to feature in his film High Noon. Everyone wanted to work with the actress. Stanley made the right choice as the film they made ended up becoming a critically successful film and a classic to this day. However, they had their fair share of troubles. The film's budget was small, the cast and crew had to complete the film in a month. Also, Katie had to create extra time to learn how to speak English. Katie was able to improve her English, but it wasn't to the point of being able to correctly call the main character's name. The filmmaker made a small change to the script to accommodate the Spitfire actress. Gerardo was a strong personality, and despite working with iconic Hollywood star Grace Kelly and Gary Cooper in the film, she was able to hold her own. She even won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress, becoming the first Latina to achieve the feat. With the success of the film, Katie had become a star of two film industries, and the sinusure of all eyes including Frank Sinatra, Marlon Brando, Tyrone Power and Ernest Borgnine. As notorious as Frank Sinatra was, he didn't get a whiff of Katie's undies. Frank had a way with women, and many actresses would love his attention, but not Katie. The actress proved to be a slippery eel, and said no to all of Frank's advances, preferring that they should be friends. Then came Marlon Brando, who frankly was Katie's kryptonite. The pair met when Marlon came to film in Mexico, but before they met, Brando had wanted her. Her black-as-hell enigmatic eyes attracted the Godfather star. Katie knew about Marlon, and when he showed interest in her, she wasn't surprised. Instead, she seemed eager to go out with the man. As she said, Marlon called me one night for a date, and I accepted. I knew all about Mavita. I knew he had a thing for Rita Marino. Hell, it was just a date. I didn't plan to marry him. Sinatra must have been gnashing his teeth when he heard this. He was equally as notorious as Brando. She knew about the women Brando had relationships with and decided to add herself to the list. Perhaps the sexy actress wanted to find out what the ladies found in the prolific actor. 
Whatever it was, she found it, and for years the two had an on-and-off affair. Like Brando, Katie also reportedly saw other people, including the man that she would later marry, Ernest Borgnine. The Spitfire Latina even didn't confirm that she and Brando had an affair. The two of them maintained that they were just close friends. Brando was her true friend of the soul, who she spoke with soul to soul. Well, it was true they were friends, but as many people claimed, there were sexual benefits to the friendship. They didn't only speak soul to soul, but groin to groin. The two had their fun and moved on. Katie moved to Borgnine, who, depending on who you ask, she met under two different circumstances. Katie claimed they met in a restaurant and he pursued her for two years. The actress loved the attention she got from Borgnine. However, reports claim that the pair met on the set of Badlanders, and Ernest was married at the time, would flirt heavily with the brilliant actress. Ernest allegedly did this to the point where word began about the two, words that found their way into Ernest's wife's ears. The supposedly left have Gerardo and Ernest the freedom to do as they pleased, but their relationship wasn't meant to be. Borgnine was morbidly jealous and insecure due to the attention his wife got. Their marriage became hellish with the two frequently arguing and giving each other unfriendly nicknames. The actress called her former husband Bulito, which translates to Little Bull, and he described her as beautiful but a tiger. Eventually the two ended their relationship and the divorce was allegedly messy. It was like Katie had a sixth sense for getting herself into messy situations, and when she left this one her mental health was battered. Well, her career continued to be stellar, even if her life wasn't. She got another impressive role in Broken Lance, and as per usual she acted it to perfection. She had to be extra convincing to get the part, as she wasn't the studio's choice. Dolores Del Rio was the person the studio wanted, but Dolores had gotten herself mixed up in some activities which made U.S. authorities suspect her to be communist, and denied her entry to the U.S. From thinking Gerardo was too young to fit the role, studio bosses were enthralled by her performance that they decided age was just a number. They deployed their makeup artist to make Gerardo look older and be in complete sync with her role. Her splendid performance got her an Oscar nomination. Katie enjoyed success in America, but it wasn't enough to forget her Mexican roots and how the Mexican movie industry shaped her to be the actress she was. So when Hollywood wanted to tie her down with a contract that would prevent her from being a part of the Mexican movie industry, she rejected it. Compared to Mexico, Hollywood had boxed her into playing stereotypical roles, or in her words, imitations of Latinas. She was able to manage being twice the star her mates were, and it almost consumed her. It wasn't as if she didn't notice. When the pressures of work and her failed marriages got to her, she retired from acting, returning to Mexico, but she couldn't stay away from acting. She returned to Hollywood, but she still hadn't recovered. She added more big names to the list of people she had acted with, Elvis being a part of those people. But at some point she wanted to give it all up. In 1968, Katie called her agent and had a chilling conversation with him. I have taken 67 sleeping pills and I am going to sleep. It was a sleep she didn't intend to wake up from. The actress gave instructions on how her property should be split and ended the call. Her agent was alarmed. Immediately the agent called health authorities and they rushed to Gerardo, who was already unconscious, with her note in her hand. After a while the paramedics managed to rouse her. Gerardo would live again, but it wasn't a happy ever after. Another tragedy loomed. Her son from her first marriage got into an accident and died. Katie wasn't even around at the time of the lad's death. She was in Mexico filming and no one told her anything until she got back. Even when she did, she couldn't grieve. She had contractual commitments that required her to return to the set in Mexico. Having to act and not being able to grieve left scars in Katie. She became depressed, but she managed to power through and act. As soon as she finished filming the film she was to star in in Mexico, the actress disappeared from the screen. She said, Every day when I saw the camera, I hated her. Guilt and the remorse of being an absent mother piled within the actress and lamented. I dedicated to the films a wonderful time I should have given to my children, but it was too late.
while the star delighted the hearts of many, her children only met her absence mostly. For three years the actress was away, and despite the talents Hollywood had, there was none like her. She was missed, and filmmakers reached out to her. They wanted her back, and after a while John Huston managed to get her back to the screen. When she returned, she never went back. She gave her all to acting, and appeared in TV series and on Broadway. As the star actress advanced in age, her body became ravaged with diseases, and despite her illnesses, Katie never stopped and continued until her heart stopped. For giving too much to her career, the actress was rewarded for it with nominations, awards, and a Hollywood Walk of Fame. Her impact was long-lasting, and it benefited the Latina stars that came after her. Katie Girardo was not easy to please, but some men will do anything to impress a woman. How Errol Flynn scammed his way into Lily Demeter's heart. Let's watch this video.